Thank you very much for coming. Uh, my name is Russ Adams. I'm the Assistant Commissioner of uh, the City's Department of Public Works and Parks. I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Uh, we have a lot of good information to provide. We have, uh, we've heard a lot of comments, questions, concerns, and uh, we're here to try to answer those questions and address, address those in the presentation that uh, our architects have for you guys tonight. Um, with us again is Katie Crockett from Lamro Pagano Associates, Rob Para from Lamro Pagano Associates. Uh, we also have here on our steering committee Jim Bedard, and we also have in the corner trying to hide over there is Eugene Caruso, he's our owner's project manager. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Katie Crockett um, to give the presentation. Oh, one other thing before that is the next meeting in which we're gonna meet is next Wednesday. It's December 18th, it's in this room. That's when the school building committee is gonna actually take a vote on the um, preferred schematic report. That's the report that our designers have to create to send to the Mass School Building Authority to move forward with the next steps in building a new Doherty High School. So with that, I'll turn it over to Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming tonight. We uh, appreciate seeing so many familiar faces. There's uh, so much interest in Doherty Memorial High School project as a, as a really critical part of the district overall, and you're evidence of that tonight. So. The format that we're going to use is review our preferred schematic report progress since we met with you last. Then we will take questions from the building committee and questions from the public. In terms of the schedule, this is a reminder for you, but we are scheduled to complete the preferred schematic report this month. And we will start right in with the schematic design and we're looking at completing that next summer. And we anticipate that construction may begin in the summer of 2021 with occupancy in the fall of 2024. When we last met with the building committee, it was agreed that our firm and our team would look more in more detailed manner at five different options. Code review, addition renovation here at Doherty, new construction here, and also new construction at the Foley Stadium site and the Chandler Magnet site. And that is where our efforts have been put. These are the graphics that you may remember before. We had developed them uh, using bubbles to represent where the actual buildings could be located. We have been working on developing those into massing models, which we're excited to show you tonight. Additionally, we have been getting more information on the actual site surveys, traffic reports, geotechnical information, and using them to assist us with our analysis of the options. At the end of the preferred schematic report phase, we will have looked at this program refinement, which we'll talk with you about briefly tonight, the site evaluations and the budget, all of this data we have to show you. From all of these, at the uh, December 18th meeting, one preferred solution will be voted to proceed with for schematic design. We took a look at all of our notes, what we heard from you in the public hearings that we had previously input that we have gotten from various community groups. And these were the issues that came forward in general terms um, that we wanted to help you understand and us to develop more into the project. And so as, the, as this presentation proceeds this evening, we hope that we have responded to concerns that came up. Very quickly, in all of the sites, there was a concern, what would be the construction impact, which is natural? What will it be like when construction is underway on any one of these sites? 
What level of athletic fields can we expect with these sites? And there was specifically an interest in a larger campus plan that not only addressed the educational plan, but the athletic plan for the school. How can we leverage city parks? We have assets here in the city. How can we better incorporate them into our projects? Specifically on the Doherty site, understandably a lot of interest in what will it be like while this is still occupied and still operating while a new building is underway. What will be the impact on the new project relative to the Newton Hill Park that is directly adjacent? For Foley Stadium, there was a great concern about the development of that site and what the impact of that district-wide facility, the stadium and the practice fields might have. And for Chandler Magnet School, what would happen to the existing school if that site were selected? Where would the students go? And what would the land acquisition that would be required mean? How would that happen? If you remember the program, and this is something that we continue to work on the past few months in terms of refining it, we're looking at a building that will be unique to the Worcester District. Not only will we be supporting a program for 1,675 students, grades 9 through 12, but it will include three additional technical or Chapter 74 programs. The existing, very successful engineering and technology program will be expanded. We will have a construction craft laborer program, web we'll program and web development for uh, internet types of programs for students to learn. And we will have marketing and finance. Additionally, we're going to have an advanced academy for biotechnology. And so this program, in the end, We'll have no match really here in the district, as many stellar projects as there are within the district and candidly within the region. So we're very proud of how this evolved. It results in a 420,000 square foot building. If you recall, that's more than double the size of this building. And it will uh, include more of the core facilities gathered together in one place and academics separately. Again, a reminder on the site program, if you, if you remember, if we had the 26 acre flat site somewhere available in the city, that would just be perfect. Not a big surprise, not uncommon in New England. There isn't one that's readily available. And so what we've been working on is how can we optimize the sites that we have? And when we look at this particular program, what would be our priorities? And a fair amount of discussion we've been having has included how much parking should be on the site. And I will say right from the get-go, we are showing all of our options with 400 parking spaces, but we imagine continuing that discussion pretty seriously at the beginning of schematic design. Because what will become evident to you is we are trying to juggle a lot of different parameters on sites that are not large enough and trying to make them the best we can to meet that program. This is a diagram that we have presented for you to show the three different sites that are under consideration. Of course, Chandler Magnet, the existing Doherty School, and, and Foley Stadium. But what we took upon ourselves is to look at the adjacent city-owned properties as well. How might they enhance any one of these sites? And so a fair amount of time has been spent on that. The way we've structured our presentation tonight is to focus on the three sites, the options development that we have, and then we have a section at the end, what we're calling kind of value added. And that is our analysis of how these additional city-owned sites might be developed to further enhance the options that we present. <coughs> Doherty Memorial High School, existing conditions. It has a, an, a, an entrance really only on Highland Street, as you can see. is nestled right into Newton Hill. 
And it has the opportunities of various park amenities that actually do come onto the site. What we have been working strategically to do with all of the options that we have analyzed for Doherty is to not disrupt the existing park facilities. We've been working to find ways that the park and the school can be mutually beneficial to a, pro a project here. The code upgrade option is really what we call a benchmark. It's looking at if this school re were to remain as it is, what types of code upgrades would be required. MSBA has us do this as an effort to look at the cost to just keep it status quo and then also to, to meet the program for other options. This would not meet the program. The plan would be to have modular classrooms at one end of the school and then sequentially over a period of years upgrade the balance of the building. And so it's a very expensive and very disruptive option, but we do have an estimate for that. Addition renovation is another option that we studied quite a bit. This again is a requirement. And here you can see uh, the blue here are the disc golf stations. The white is the Newton Hill Pathways. And this is the east-west trail in red along here. So as you keep an eye on all of these options, you will note that those are not disturbed. The addition renovation option, not surprisingly, takes the entire site, very sprawling. We have a new core facility addition, a new academic wing, separate from the existing academic wings. It's an inefficient plan. Uh, it meets the program much better than the code upgrade option, but has a lot of compromise involved with it. And additionally, it has the athletic field with the parking underneath it. Very challenging site. Multiple years, much more than new construction would be, and you will see that the cost for this would rival new construction. This is um, the floor plans of the options. You can see the, co the core facilities, which are in the reddish color, are uh, more grouped together than they currently are, and the academic wings are more separate, but they're still not ideal. This is a massing model that was developed to give people a sense of scale. The gray would be the existing school renovated, the white would be new construction. And you can see how it would uh, blend with the site, if you will, but it also just takes up the entire site. There's really very little green space left. The new construction option that we uh, are showing you tonight is the result of a, a long process where we looked at multiple options. And that's not only for the Doherty site, but for Chandler as well as Foley. We had dozens of options. And what we're presenting to you is the consensus of our team and the steering committee in terms of the best options within those. This is the new construction option for Doherty. It, if you look carefully, you can, oh, you can see the massing model. Uh, if you look carefully, you can see the white dashed line, with, which indicates where the existing building will remain during construction. So we're hugging the east side of the site um, with a, 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 a project that steps up the hillside and uh, fits into that area. I'll show you a little bit more about that. As far as the circulation goes, we have this parking in the center with bus circulation separated from parent pickup and drop off. We have an artificial turf field that is on the surface. It's not with a garage below it. We do have some parking, about 100 cars, under the, the uh, topmost part of the school. And that is one technique that we took a look at in terms of making the site as efficient as possible. In terms of the massing model, I think this is where you get a sense for how this particular option breaks down the scale of the building. 420,000 gross square feet is a very large building. And this is carefully designed 
with the academic wings along the east side, plenty of daylight, um, and a spine of circulation right down the center that separates the core facilities very clearly from the academic wings. So again, for a large school, this provides a tremendous amount of opportunity for orientation. The main entrance is represented by the red triangle, very close to the parking and the field beyond. And then those academic wings will kind of gradually step up the hill and in the winter time, be able to see through the trees over to Park Avenue. The scale along Highland Street is interesting. We imagine uh, some interesting elevations that we can develop here, and again, it steps into the site, so it's not an overwhelming design. These are the floor plans. It's really a, it's really a four-story building that keeps stepping up, up the hill, if you will. And this diagram, this section diagram, is to help you understand how much lower than the summit of Newton Hill it is planned to be. Additionally, at Highland Street, it will be a, uh, certainly higher than the existing school, but it's, it's not overwhelming. And Park Avenue is represented by a dashed line at the lower part of the slide. So it will even be the, the foot traffic and the view in your car up will be diminished in terms of the height of that actual building. And now uh, Rob is going to talk a little bit about the complexities of the phasing that might happen for um, the Doherty construction project. And um, thank you. And as noted, your input is very important that we've heard through the last meetings um, and taking that into consideration as we move ahead. Um, this slide shows the phasing of the project. It's a phased occupied construction. As you know, it's a very tight site. Um, but the phasing with this is set to begin in the summer of 21. And it will begin with separating the, what would be the active construction site on the left side um, with the school site. And to do that, they'll build a barrier or a wall between, or a fence between the two. A very similar, if anyone's familiar with South, what we did at South High School and at Nelson Play School. Um, and, the, uh, and after that is done, they'll be looking to pave around the existing school to capture as many parking spaces as we can. Because under construction, you're going to be losing part of your parking and you're going to be losing your sports field. So the goal is to get a circulation on the existing building for the buses as they presently go and the cars to go back around the site. Um, the city does hire construction managers at risk, which is very advantageous um, for construction such as this. You get the manager involved very early in the project and they try to foresee all of the situations and problems and have an ongoing conversation with the school about how things are going. Um, and, we, and they do specify things like blackout hours. So when the construction is ongoing, there will be no trucks arriving for the site, no deliveries in the morning or afternoon period of time. And as with South, I don't believe the two know each other are there. Um, other than the kids have a good opportunity to watch a building going up. But as we said, there would be off-site parking required. And now the discussion was this would be two phase, so the first phase begins in 21. Um, the building we're intending to complete in the summer of 2024. Um, and at that time, when the school is let out, hopefully there won't be many snow days that year, they begin removing the asbestos and hazmat in the existing building and demolishing the existing building and steps. Um, so they first peel it back. So when you open up the school in fall of 24, the building, of course, will be ready. Um, and then maybe one of these parking lots will be ready, and a few months later, the second parking lot will be ready. And then the fields themselves will be worked on after that, and with hope with the ter synthetic turf fields that they may be available in spring of 25. Um, the contract of being a tight site will be able to use the parking garage for staging. And of course, being a tight site, that is reflected in the budget as we move ahead. Uh, 
And so there have been discussions regarding the site development itself, and I'll introduce some of that here with the walls. You know, this site was chosen because it fits best with the existing site. It blends better on around the perimeter at the east side and the south side. Um, and so what we're looking at is there was some discussion on retaining walls or slopes. We would look to vegetate all the slopes where we do encounter, where we do have to excavate for the school and looking to do green retaining walls for where we have higher slopes um, where it's available. Um, and on the same breath, the existing trees along the street um, will have to come down for this project. When this scheme is landscaped, we would look to keep the same type of trees, the same landscaping that Olmsted would have chosen for this site um, along the street and along the lines. So we'd be hoping to maintain and keep sensitivity to the park as we move ahead you know, with the project. Thank you. So I will look at fully the two other sites, um, and then we'll hand it back to Kata to go through some of the summaries of this. Uh, Foley Stadium is one of the candidates. Um, it is a very active stadium, um, but it's a flat, undeveloped site of about 16 acres. The project, when Foley Stadium was built in the 20s, uh, this was a swamp and Beaver Brook running through it. Um, they basically put the, the Beaver Brook in a conduit and they filled the swamp um, and the stadium was built. The soils here are not advantageous to build a building on. Um, we will have to have set the building in piles of other things which will reflect on the cost, um, but it is doable. Um, it is in a very dense neighborhood on three sides, obviously with Beaver Brook Park and Chandler Street on the other side. Uh, the surrounding land is all very much higher than, about six to eight feet higher than the existing site. And the development of this site, um, looking again, as Katie had said, we looked at multiple schemes for each site. Uh, with this site, we particularly thought the building fit best in the front, where Chandler Street is. We can get a nice bus drop off along the front and keep the parent pick up and drop off separated um, through the rear and the parking, you know, getting 400 spaces, being some of the parking on the west side and look for the opportunity to get, uh, there is some land available, there's some land, vacant land off of um, Norman Ave with the potential of, of obtaining that to build out the parking so we don't need any kind of parking garage for this scheme. Uh, this scheme ends up with one practice field um, for it. Um, I'll jump in. So this shows the massing of the project. The building is very, very similar to the scheme for Doherty that we just showed you, with the exception it's you know on four, it doesn't step up a hill um, to develop it, but it has the same pods to get the light and ventilation, all the main circulation in the front. Um, with the neighborhood impacts we had talked about, all of these sites you know, you will have construction for three years in the neighborhood. Um, with the construction manager, they try to mitigate any of the construction activities, but you are building a building there. It always is usually harder on the people that are closer, which is why we try to put position the building more in the front. Um, the traffic, the site will also have traffic implications. You know, similar, Highland Street, everybody is used to the traffic here. Um, there will be adding you know, probably 25% more cars to Chandler Street than presently have, mainly during the slot and time in morning commute, and we've carried in the budget some dollar values to sort of mitigate that on that site. Uh, the, one of the features on this site is that the stadium is very highly used. Um, it's district-wide by 38 teams, more than a thousand students. You know, they do rent it out when it's available over summers. Um, obviously, it's heavily utilized in fall and spring, where the school season is. Um, we looked, we had talked with the district athletic department, and they really feel, and the school feels, that the, dis the Foley has to remain as a stadium at some location, um, and part of that with this field has the full stadium was updated recently with painting um, the track was resurfaced and the field was redone as turf 
Uh, it does contain two practice fields in the back, full-size soccer and or field hockey type fields, or full-size baseball fields. So those would have to find a different location um, should the site be chosen, which is, and some of the discussion, you do have Beaver Brook across the street, which is a very highly utilized community park. Um, and again, May through December, the school does have the first scheduling rights for any of the fields they want to use. So Doherty does use the softball field here. They have the ability to use the football field for practice. Um, and then there are two little league fields that are on here and then a field hockey. This site is completely in a floodplain, um, which is very difficult to develop for anything other than fields. The, it, when it was designed in 2006, where they re reorganized these fields a little bit, um, they made it so that the flooding, which happens during every major rainstorm, try to avoid the fields and gets in the pockets along the accessway drives. Um, we do not feel that this site is suitable to build a stadium or any kind of very high cost long term facilities on it. It's perfectly adequate to develop the fields um, on that, right? So looking to a Chandler Magnet site, um, before as we noted, this is a 22 acre site. Uh, the building was built in 1950s as a middle school for about 900 students. It's there have been some upgrades done to it. It's got about $7 million of repairs that are slated to be done on the school. Uh, but, you know, Worcester, a lot of the buildings need, you know, work that's been outlined in a lot of reports. But the site steps up to the fields about 20 feet and then 70 feet to the back. It is very heavily surrounded by neighborhoods around the, on the north side and along May Street uh, with Worcester State University downhill on the south side and of course having the university adjacent to it could have some pluses and some minuses you know depending on how we speak to and how um, we would allocate this there is a conduit running through the site also but it is much smaller in diameter and it's a normal size that would have to be dealt with for this development so with the multiple options the site the building that we were looking at for this scheme again would sit in the front about where the existing school is maintain the fields behind the school uh, look to have a bus drop off coming in off of may street and onto chandler street uh, getting a good part of the parking up in front of the school very accessible to the main door where the little the triangle is there uh, the, this building would be four stories in the front and three stories in the back with the parking in the back and the and the nice part about this is it's very organized um, and you could just walk out to the fields as we stated that this site really depends on taking land from the Worcester State University the Alumni Federation that owns the president's house and a garden lot and it also would require taking land um, from the from the parcels along May Street, um, some in the back for more act more as a buffer zone to try to mitigate the construction and mitigate the school being there. Um, but that is a necessity to uh, get the school to function. And this is the massing of the school. Um, notwithstanding um, the issues with the existing school program, with Worcester State University, with the neighbors, from a construction point. This, you know, this is probably the easiest school to build, and it's reflected in the cost. However, as spoken, the, the Chandler Magnus School was built as a 900 school student that is a active school in the program. The about 500, I'm gonna round things up, is where the existing programs are. The discussions at the last meeting was to maintain the program as it is, and the district further looked to find where in the school system they could find a location where they could fit the 500 students. And they ended up saying, we do not have a location for that. So that is one of the um, points that is, will be looked at when these sites are rated. You know, and that will be taken into consideration for other discussions. Obviously, with the neighborhood, the similar neighborhoods, it will have the normal construction impacts in the neighborhood with the school going up. And while there is a present school there with sports fields, you will have increased volume of traffic and people 
and it will be coming through schools. So that will you know, be an impact to the neighborhood. It's certainly we're going to look to mitigate that by having the parent drop off as many as you can on the site, the buses on the site, you know, with locations for the fields, um, but that is a negative. Chandler Street also with the traffic, um, we reported it will have an impact on Chandler Street, um, probably a little bit different than Foley Stadium, which is closer to signalizations. So we would be looking, if it went here, we'd be looking to mitigate the traffic um, for pedestrian access and, you know, try to handle the morning commute. And with that, um, go back to Katie, and we can talk about how the ranking went for the various projects, and then we'll step into the alternate sites and, the, and some costing analysis of how everything plays out. So as Rob said, um, we have some big picture issues here. Uh, the existing Doherty site is encumbered by maintaining an existing school on campus during construction. We do, we do have a solution for that. When we look at Foley or Chandler or the opportunity to build a new school on a different site, it would no question relieve the pressures on this existing site. It would allow the school to run status quo and then the new construction happens. However, what we have at both Foley and Chandler are existing facilities where there's not a capital plan to replace them and they're both essential to the district. That's what we have learned. And they're both in a, in a position that would be a huge encumbrance to the development of these sites. And, and that's kind of it in a nutshell. We went back to the weighted criteria, if you remember, that we used during the preliminary design program process with a column to the left showing one through five, the weights, and that five being the best and one being the least, and, and the criteria, uh, starting with the ability to meet the building program uh, being an important part of it, the site acquisitions, the business about whether uh, something is available for development or not, the comparative staff and student impact, as well as, and, and so on. Then the ability to meet the athletics program. These, these criteria we kept in place and we, we weighted them through our analysis in terms of all of this work that we've been doing the past few months. <coughs> which also includes uh, gathering input from many different sectors of the public as well as the district and, and the administration. And again, if you remember, a perfect score is 185. So we don't have a perfect option on the table. Um, as would be expected, the code upgrade ranks the least. This does not meet the program. What ranks the highest is Doherty as something where it is an opportunity. We have the ability to develop the site. The other two, as I said, require demolition and or replacement of the existing facilities and that's a huge encumbrance. So uh, an addition renovation is ranked low. Again, not surprisingly, this building honestly is not a great candidate for that as we have said from the beginning due to the construction type, the low ceilings, the level of hazardous material in the building, uh, it's really not a good candidate for that and that continued to show through all of the consultant reviews that we had of the project. And so at the end of our analysis, new construction at the Doherty site surfaces as the highest rank option here. We reviewed all of this with our steering committee, which um, also includes Superintendent Maureen Benenda, who's here tonight, and Principal Sally Maloney. Um, and they uh, concur that this is their recommendation as a preferred solution. Now, we're not here tonight to vote on that, but we're here to report to you on our analysis and, and where we are at this point. Additionally, we got uh, cost estimates done by an independent estimator. Uh, Eugene Caruso's company, Tishman, worked to do a check on that as well. And in essence, the numbers that we had during the preliminary design program, uh, with all the refinement that we have, appear to hold. So we're looking at about a $300 million 
project budget. Um, and if you take a look at addition renovation, that rivals uh, new construction, as I mentioned earlier in the um, process. Another interesting thing is to look at the code upgrade. We're looking at about $80 million of investment in this building to uh, bring it up to code and additional uh, project costs on top of that. So it's an important factor to consider with an existing building. So we uh, have, have all of these alternatives that we presented to you tonight. We were candid from the beginning. We don't have the perfect site. We don't have one that can address all of the athletic uh, amenities that are appropriate for a contemporary high school. So we did take it upon ourselves to look at other city-owned land and any opportunities to develop those. Some of the things that are important to keep in mind here is some of these are park parks that we're looking at. Parks are operated by the Parks Department. They are subject to Article 97 for development. Some of them are on school-owned property. And school-owned property is uh, operated and maintained by the school district. And there's more latitude in terms of how we develop those. But uh, with more details now, here is Rob. And thank you again. And as you know, Katie had mentioned, and shouldn't go on said that the you know this has been a difficult, a challenging to pick a site for this project, but the development of the school itself and the programs has been very exciting. You know the teachers, the staff, and looking at other facilities throughout. It really is going to bring this school much ahead, and it will be a great program. And and the programs offered, you know, are befitting of the city and befitting of this district. Um, the sports program was a little bit shy. Um, there was not any of these sites have the ability to give the sports programs, you know, the fields that, you know, would be desired by the school and, you know, frankly, that would be best to have. So we were looking at a few sites um, that we could hope to expand that. Um, one of the first ones is uh, Duffy Field, um, which is just beyond Newton Circle. Um, it's an existing softball field. Um, and, and there's a wooded area about the half line beyond and a swamp and a wetland resource area beyond that. So the Parks Department and looking at what might be able to expand for fields, you will have a, a, a field here on the site is looking potentially to get a practice field and potentially a practice field during the construction. So they're able to continue the sports program, you know, closer to where the school is. And as with the other fields, they're really used by the school in the spring and fall, um, but the community would have the opportunity to, to use them during nights and all of the time. So developing this field is one of the options that was discussed. Um, we, we had meetings with the Parks Department, we meet had with the District Athletics, and this surface is being probably a good option to have. Uh, it is around some residential toward the, um, toward the road there, but across the street you have the temple facilities, uh, the radio tower, and it is a present field. So we'd be looking to develop this as a potential field for it. Um, and we're looking to do this, if possible, prior to construction. Um, but again, that's something logistics will have to work out. Um, one of the other opportunities being adjacent to Newton Hill, um, as we were looking and discussing, is how we could improve some of the trails within the system. Um, and you know potentially resurfacing the tennis courts or doing other benefits to the the park that would benefit both the city through the parks and the school. We had one idea to sort of shorten the route between the school and Foley Stadium, and that would be to cut a path, you know, sort of going along the along the contours and tie into an existing park path that goes from or where the bank building is, or the old telegraph building, over to where the church is, and down across the street to Foley, and Foley for a shorter route. I hate to say I've had some ideas that have fallen flat, and this is one of them. Um, the school, the originally was suggested, and we sort of developed to get a price for it. I don't think the uh, you know the parks 
the funds of Newton Hill is favorable toward it and the school is not favorable toward it. But what it does do is act as we're looking to what a budget could be to do some development that would be mutual beneficial. Um, so this serves you know, that purpose in doing that. And the, uh, one of the other discussions would be with the Foley Stadium, you know, if the school were to stay here, um, is how would we get into Foley Stadium and some developments needed. As I mentioned earlier, there were a couple of parcels of land we would look to, you know, negotiate a purchase um, to get a place to drop, you know, drop people off, better access, you know, maybe some tennis courts, and then look potentially to if the back fields, which are highly used by um, by Doherty, is there any developments that need on there? Right now, we're carrying a budget. It just includes some, you know, some work. There has been discussion of maybe increasing the development of those fields, you know, as we move ahead to the next step and the next part of the project. Uh, looking for Beaver Brook, as we mentioned, this is all on the floodplain. It is highly used by the community. Uh, we have talked to the Parks Department. And the Parks Department always is looking to develop fields along with the school and fields that can be used by the community and the schools. Um, with, the, you know, with the floodplain here, we really don't see any, any other location other than the open field that's at the bottom. And that floods routinely, so we're carrying a budget to put it on the drains there so it would drain a little bit quicker um, so that it would be more usable. The Little League fields presently, the Little League fields are like a lot of other things. They do the things in community nowadays. They don't have the enrollment they would hope to, uh, but they are still active. The Parks Department said he really has no other location to put those in the city. So at this stage of the game, they would like to maintain those fields. Um, but, you know, they certainly were open to the youth football field. Um, for joint use, the softball field, and if the middle was in the middle field was developed um, to utilize that. Uh, one of the parcels that has been discussed at this meeting, I think by a lot of people, is there's a parcel of land off Park Avenue, which used to be the tail end of the old Harrington and Richardson. I think Copus Engineering and another facility was there. So the discussion is, well, could you develop that? as part of the entire project. Now this would be reflective of if Foley Stadium had, if it wasn't Foley Stadium, where could we build a stadium? And again, that stadium would really need to be in service at the beginning of school, you know, when this school, the light lot was taken to build a school. Uh, so we looked at this particular site, whether it would fit. Um, it does fit overlapping, I think it's Mayfield Street. Um, we would not want to put an expensive facility in, in a piece of land that floods. So with this, we're looking to mitigate by raise the field up with a detention system underneath it um, and dig out around it so when it did flood, you would remain the same storage of water. It is an expensive option, um, but it does get a field there. It does get open bleachers. And one thing I didn't mention is when the district athletics was saying with Foley Stadium, is if Foley Stadium had to be relocated, they felt that the number of seats that they have presently, they would not want that many seats. They're looking about 1,500 seats. However, the locker rooms need to be maintained. The toilets need to be maintained. That's a code issue. Um, so we do need a building for that. Um, and actually, the district also said that even knowing what the field's coming into use, they would love to have more flat fields. Uh, but anyway, we were thinking about putting the building further up, which is sort of with outside of the wetland, I mean, excuse me, outside of the floodplain, and get some parking on here. Um, the problem with this is the cost of this ends up about, you know, 35 to 40 million with land cost involved with this, with having to mitigate the detention system. So if there was another parcel of land that this could be located, you could bring that cost down but it is still a sizable cost to relocate the stadium. Um, as I say with the stadium, you would guess get the stadium there. Behind Foley, you have two good sized flat fields, a full size baseball field. So using Chandler Magnet, who has sort of some underutilized fields as a potential, at least a study, if the fields could be located there and develop that for flat fields. And this was just a task to see if they would fit. You excavate further in the hill, utilizing the existing parking, getting accessibility up to it, 
And with this site, you could get a baseball field um, and two flat fields and maintain a softball field, which could, is presently used by the neighborhoods. And again, this example is Chandler Magnet. Um, to show the cost of this is running around $6 million for grass fields. So if not here, that's just another cost that would be encumbered by the city to get flat fields. You know, and that's the, the purpose of this exercise, to see what that is. And then with the final numbers, um, I'll turn it back to Katie. Um, hopping back and forth. But. It's important to note here that any project that we undertake at this point is a little too early for us to tell specifically what reimbursement rate the city could expect to receive. But based on past experience with Nelson Place and South High, we're estimating it would be about 50% the city and 50% MSBA for the major construction projects. The column that we have in the left is all of these sort of menu of options that Rob just outlined, and none of these would qualify for reimbursement. So it would be an investment by the city, and, and some of these are in as I said, park areas, some are, are fields at schools, so we would have to take a look at where the funding would come from, what the funding sources would be for them, but they are opportunities to enhance each of these sites in a different way, and that's why we analyze them here. So when we look at the Doherty site, uh, the, the um, options that we took a look at include so that lower range, the $6 million, would be the Duffy Field Improvements, and this is with artificial turf and lighting, and lighting today has a very strong cutoff. It's not the neighborhood impact of lighting of, of old. Uh, additional pedestrian crosswalks, traffic control, many of the issues that we anticipate with the Doherty Project uh, to begin with. Other options that we could take a look at, you can see, would be temporary off-site parking. What we anticipate is during construction we would have adequate parking for staff and visitors, uh, not for students, and we can keep looking at that, so that would be desirable, no doubt. Um, the Newton Hill Trail improvements that Rob outlined, the improved access to Foley Field, and um, the Beaver Brook, and, and an option that has come forward is perhaps, and we don't have numbers for it at the moment, but looking at the Foley Field existing uh, athletic facilities, the, the fields behind the stadium, and seeing if we can improve them with artificial turf and opportunity for the entire district to be able to use them more regularly, and it would be a benefit clearly, clearly to Doherty. The next one is um, the Foley Stadium site, which the minimum for this, as Rob outlined, was the that's an, assuming private land would be required and then building building the facility. The, the lo location in the floodplain makes it more, more expensive, definitely. An optional would be some of the other options that we outlined in terms of access to the site, the Beaverbrook fields, and again, oh, traffic and pedestrian crosswalks, replacement of the practice fields at Foley at Chandler, so they would be separated in the city with this option. And then the Chandler Magnet School is a little bit tough in terms of this range, but the minimum cost would be an estimate for the land costs that we talked about, a real basic number if there was a place for the students to be ro relocated within the district, but we, do we don't have one. So that's a big kind of issue. How would that happen? Would we have to lease space? Would we have to buy or build another school to house them? There's over 500 students in there. So that's a big, big issue with Chandler. Um, and then, of course, the traffic. A repayment to MSBA, there were some improvements to the school, as Rob mentioned, and we would have to pay back to MSBA a portion of that. And then the, um, actually the de demolition of the Doherty School to follow. So those are some things that we had as the base costs 
to give you a feel for that. So we hope this is helpful to you. What we've done is taken a look at those three core sites that the building committee asked us to do, the code upgrade, the addition renovation, and new construction, as well as new construction at Chandler and Foley, and tried to analyze other assets within the city that we might be able to work with uh, to develop a better site for, for the future Doherty. And with that, we'd be happy to take any questions from the building committee first. We do have a microphone in the back, if you don't mind stepping up um, to, so everybody can hear your question. Are there any questions from the building committee? Mr. Bergman. Thank you. Um, so I have a few questions. I know, I know we've You've done your presentation for almost an hour, and other people want to ask questions and have equally important questions to ask. But we're going to be making a decision, I would think, in about 10 days, and I just want to make sure I have as much information as possible. I appreciate the materials you gave us ahead of time. But going forward, the questions I have are as follows. Is there a specific amount of acreage that the, um, the parkland at Darty High School loses with the Darty option? And is that offset by incorporating what would be a demolished Doherty back into the park? And how, what's the trade-off? What's lost, what's gained? So with the Doherty development option, right, option in particular, yeah. zero, okay. zero of the park is lost. In fact, as we indicated, we have <clears throat> carefully uh, developed it to maintain, excuse me, the existing disc golf and trails. I'm not crying, I've just got something stuck in my throat. Okay. I hope I'm not making you cry. I'm not trying to. Absolutely not. Very good. Okay. So no, none of the the, the, the twenty acres that were, were deeded to the school in the sixties we are honoring. <clears throat> okay. So it's a, uh, excuse me. So I just want to be clear about that because there are differing opinions on mm -hmm. that. And I want to hear that. Second question I have is is there any way to incorporate if Darty is chosen, is there any way to incorporate into any of the construction contracts uh, that the students will remain on, on site regardless of what safety issues develop. And I say that because one of the initial meetings we had here, mm -hmm. there was a different opinion as to whether or not the students could or could not stay while the building was being built. And I think you'll recall that. And then at I a later do. meeting, that was changed and there was a lot more confidence that if the Darty option is chosen, mm -hmm. there's not going to be an issue with the students changing. If I vote for a Darty option, and obviously we're not voting tonight and I haven't committed to which option I vote for. I would not want to come back in a year or two and explain to parents why their kids were removed from that site. Because to me, that's one of the major factors in choosing a site, is not disrupting where the kids go to school. Understood. Excellent point. Uh, we heard everybody uh, clearly on that issue. There was no other place to relocate the Doherty students, honestly, partially or fully. And so we have been carefully analyzing the Doherty option keeping in mind that all of the 1,500 students that are currently in the school would remain and, and the, st the staff and the level of curriculum development. As Rob mentioned, we have had great success with this and two other sites here in the city and numerous other projects that we have designed. Those two others are South High Community School currently under construction and Nelson Place Elementary School successfully completed. So we do have a level of confidence at this point. Well, beyond that level of confidence, it would be helpful to know if there's a legal way. And I don't know who you can consult with, with uh, for that issue. But I, I feel better knowing that the developer is committed legally to make sure that there isn't a problem two, three years from now where they say we can't finish this on, on time because of the problems going on with the two schools being, uh, you know, interacting at the same time. So therefore, we're going to delay it because that's not something I'm looking for and I don't think anybody here is either. It's, it's a long enough period of time to be building that school. I don't want the fact that there's another school actively ongoing to be an excuse for a delay. So I'm just wondering, I don't know who you refer to, who you uh, communicate with regarding legal issues, 
on the uh, on your uh, proposals, but I'm just wondering if there's a way to bind whoever's going to develop this to make sure that it's built within the timetable, would be built if Darty's chosen, as opposed to another location, and to make sure that the fact that an existing school operating doesn't become an excuse. So I don't expect an answer well, right now. But well, this is early in this early stage in the design, but we will, um, as we have in the past, embed in our contract documents, phasing diagrams, schedule requirements. We'll work with Tishman in terms of being able to enforce that as well as we possibly can. And uh, we will stage the entire project with that in mind. And that is a legal document when it is bid. I have two other questions that have come, and then I'm done, and other people need to speak. But uh, if I heard you correctly, um, the uh, demolition and the regrading and any potential hazardous material would not be covered uh, by the MSBA if we were to choose a site that wasn't Darty. Does that also mean that it is covered? if we do choose the dirty site, regardless of what's discovered underground? Um, the two, there's two questions there. If the Doherty were demolished because we were developing another site, it definitely would not be reimbursed by the MSPA. As part of the construction project, it will be partially reimbursed. They limit how much they reimburse for hazardous material and there are limits on all, all thresholds on uh, various parts of a project, but it would be incorporated into it to a certain extent. Yeah, I'm not suggesting there are hazardous materials, but it's always mm -hmm. good to think ahead. Correct. And one other question and one last comment. The question I would have is that a lot of the effect to uh, the Foley option, to me, uh, requires input of what's, very, you know, what's the person that's been referred to as a district athletic director. I've been here, I think, to every meeting. I think it would be extremely helpful if that person were actually here because there's some specific questions that I would like to ask that person. So before we vote the next time, I'm wondering if that person can actually be here. Um, your, your point is acknowledged. We can talk with the city and the district okay. about that. And the last is a comment, and that is with all the wonderful options being designed within this school, I know it's an extra expense, but Comparing that expense to so many other expenses, I, it would be an ideal opportunity to consider uh, an indoor athletic-sized swimming pool for this school because aquatics is just an unbelievable opportunity for young folks, especially in a winter climate, and we don't really have that throughout the city. So I'll just throw that out there and thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. No, I don't think anybody on the steering committee would disagree with your last comment. MSBA is very strict about not reimbursing for a project that includes a swimming pool. So it's not an opportunity for us if we want to pursue the MSBA reimbursement. Are there any other questions from the building committee? Oh, I'll repeat it. Oh. Is there, is there any way, um, with the Highland Street site, has there any thought about widening Highland Street? I, I know you've got a really good flow plan for traffic on site, but because it's one lane in each direction, all it takes is a little bit of a backup to create, and then it starts impacting traffic uh, pretty far west, usually towards Paxton. Is there any way to like look at maybe widening Highland Street in front of the, front of the school to mitigate that? So the question that was about, for the Doherty site, uh, had we looked at widening the street, um, we have not looked at widening the street per se. However, as Rob mentioned, we're definitely looking at the traffic impact and opportunities to mitigate it. We do have students crossing the street. We have a tremendous amount of traffic coming and going all day long. Uh, it's a major artery into the city. Um, there are many ambulances that go by here. Um, so we're well aware of the the factors that we would have to consider, and that would definitely be a part of schematic design. The other option is we, the school, the city owns the land in front of the school, so I would assume if a turnoff lane or any drop-off lanes would be advantageous, that could be incorporated in the project. However, the land to the to the east and to the west on our on this side of the street is parks land, and we cannot encroach on that those parcels. Any other building committee member questions? Okay. Any questions from the public? Yes. 
First of all, I want to uh, apologize uh, myself. Those that know me know I speak my mind. If it sounds like I'm hitting home, I probably am. So I want to apologize. First of all, someone mentioned Olmstead tonight and how we were going to pick up uh, uh, and grade and put greenery in where there were bankings. Olmstead hasn't stopped rolling in his grave since the city stole, stole this land to begin with. It was meant for a park. It should be a park, but it isn't. This was the second choice 55 years ago, and we're doomed to make the mistake again. 400 cars. You don't mention the buck. Thank you. You mention the bu You don't mention the buses. The buses are the ones that idle, smell up the neighborhood, and create the worst traffic. The 400 cars. Yeah, it's a problem, but it's not the worst problem. You also mentioned district sports being uh, disrupted if it was at Foley. Has anyone reached out to any of the colleges to ask if we could, on a short-term basis, use their facilities? Could, could I address the bus issue anyone first? Can answer and, it. Then I, I, and then we'll answer that one. On the buses, uh, you're correct. We didn't specifically say there are eight to ten buses that we anticipate here. Every one of the site plans is featuring a yellow dashed line which shows those buses coming in off of the street. And that, that's a huge, been a huge part of our efforts. So um, we may not have been clear about that tonight, but that's definitely a part of each of these options. And yes, um, I understand that the district has reached out to the local colleges on numerous occasions. And there are actually some agreements with some of the colleges, but they often the schedules overlap and naturally the colleges are going to give their students precedence over the district students. So there are some, some good arrangements um, in that regard, but they are not sufficient to um, supplement the entire needs of the athletic department. Well, some of these colleges use our facilities, mm -hmm. sometimes disrupting us. So I think it should be fair play. Plus, they don't pay taxes. I do. Also, um, I have a problem with a lot of, uh, well not a lot, but some people that are making this decision, being non-residents, they can go home to their suburbs after they're done with their vote, but we have to live with it. We have to go by this place half a dozen times a day or whatever. It's easy for them to do when they go to Holden or Sturbridge or wherever. Um, that is a, a point taken. However, the building committee members all have an affiliation with the school. There are teachers, there are other uh, people that represent the city and represent the school. So that has been um, approved by MSBA. They have a very strict uh, list of people that need to be represent entities, excuse me, that need to be represented on the building committee. And so I don't want any um, misunderstandings in terms of the role of these people that have volunteered to be here tonight in that role. The amount of time tonight spent on the Doherty site versus the other two or three sites, if you're talking about the uh, seven acres of crock property are dwarfed by the discussion on Doherty. In talking with some voting members, the only thing you didn't bring to this meeting tonight is the dirt and shovels to put in the parking lot. Uh, Doherty is definitely emphasized in this presentation. Nobody from our team will deny that, but that is because we are required by MSBA to look at the code upgrade, the addition renovation, as well as new construction at the existing site. So that is the difference. You know, you can think out of the box. If full, if Dari moves from here, everyone's saying, oh, we're gonna tear the building down. Worcester State's dying for Chandler Jr. Some of them use the money to redevelop this and solve two problems with one issue. 
Is there any other input from the public for tonight? Yes. Hi, uh, sorry I have a bit of a list, but I'll try and um, be brief. Um, first of all, Mo, the kids already swim at Boys and Girls Club, which is a great facility and the schools have a have an agreement to use that. The problem is that they don't have any way to get there, so that's part of the reason that Doherty kids have a hard time participating because parents have to take off school, school to get their kids there. Um, my main question, which maybe reflects also what Mo said about the athletics, is I don't understand, and I don't know all the things that are at Foley Stadium, but I don't understand why the only sites for Foley options are within this area. Uh, it seems to me that Foley is a shared facility that serves all of the schools, and so I don't know if you need to relocate the Foley Stadium facilities if Doherty were to move there. I don't understand why it, the options are all within the west side. So that's a, that's a question really about athletics, um, but it confused me. Um, I, I, I do want to say that I live in the neighborhood, my daughter goes to Doherty, my son is supposed to start at Doherty in the fall of 2021 and graduate in the spring of 2025, so we certainly are interested in, in what's going to happen, but also as people who are longtime residents and expect to continue to be residents, I, I want to commend the, um, the design plan, uh, I, I want to commend the, the effort to think about the existing landscape and the park. Uh, and to um, think about a site that doesn't overwhelm the street and that has some parking underneath the building as opposed to just all out um, in, and where everybody has to look at it. Um, so, so I appreciate uh, and I think that the proposed um, Doherty site is really thoughtful. So I appreciate that and thank you. I do have a couple of additional questions. How much parking is here now? There are 250 striped parking spaces. There are more cars parked here on a regular basis. So it's just 400 spots does sound like a, a large amount. Um, the other question I had was about uh, the comment about trees taken on Park Avenue and the retaining wall. Um, I don't know if anybody else was surprised by the retaining wall that was put behind the um, the bank that was built, and I love that they reused that building, but that was disastrous and it looks awful. Um, so I'm concerned when I see retaining wall and sort of what that's going to mean to the park landscape. So I had some questions about that, um, or I guess that is the question. Uh, I didn't hear about lost trees at the other site though, so I do want to acknowledge that there may be lost mm -hmm. trees no matter what. Um, I think that was the main set of questions. So. There, just the issue about athletics and what's affected is kind of confusing because we, it doesn't seem like we have all that information. So thank you. If I, if I could clarify your first question, is it that if Doherty were to move to Foley? Okay, so that's really a sequential issue, correct? We now have Foley Stadium with a tremendous amount of usage by the entire district. It's the only cross, uh, cross country, <laughs> it's the only competitive track in the entire city for all, all of the uh, district. So it, it would have to be, in, in our minds, replaced before Doherty could be moved over there. And that's why we presented the opportunities that we see immediately it, it for, for doing that. It's, that's really above and beyond what a typical study would show, but uh, because of the interest in that, we, we did take a look at that. I, I, appreciate, I appreciated all of that element. What I don't understand, and maybe it's because that track is used by Doherty and so it needs to be near Doherty, but I think of Foley Stadium as a citywide resource, mm -hmm. and if it's a citywide resource, it seems to me then, if you need to put it someplace else, the whole city comes into play, mm -hmm. and that's the part that I didn't understand. It, it's an it's an excellent point. I mean, it could it could go in other areas. We, our our task was to look in the Doherty quadrant and to analyze options here, and that's what we did. Um, and we did. And so there are there there may be other opportunities. It, that is a big. That's a 14 acre site, and we're finding difficulty finding that for Doherty, as we did as we looked at uh, opportunities for South High. There aren't a lot of these space is still left in the city unless you do go ahead and buy private land. And those two examples were used because they were discussed in the past as 
parcels of land that were available, and it sets about a dollar value. You know, so it, it gives you a budget. So if they don't go there and they go somewhere else, well, the budgets maybe will be a little bit different, but it is in that magnitude. So you know, your question is, is good, but it doesn't have to go there. But there is a, a good size value to where you do relocate it to if you relocate it in its present state. Yeah, that's clear. Thank you, and I also appreciated understanding the demolition costs, whether they would or would not be included if the, we picked a different site. So thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, yes. First off, Katie and Rob, I want to thank you for your presentation tonight. I think it was helpful. Um, I, I think the concern, I, I, in speaking for, for a number of people, is understanding your recommendation and where this vote likely will go is, is that this site, by definition, really falls short, I think, by everyone's understanding of what we all want this high school to be. It's just too small. It's 13 acres, and the committee indicated we need 26 acres. And so um, it's going to be lacking of what I think everyone wants. And that is against the backdrop of the challenges that we all understand we face here in the city. Uh, and I was encouraged to see that the, the Beaver Brook uh, option was being explored. It's relatively close to the school and it does provide some additional fields for uh, the students uh, in the school. I think it's very, very important that that not be just an idea, that there be really a firm commitment from the elected officials in the city to, to almost have shovels in the ground tomorrow on that because construction is going to start in the summer of 21, I believe, um, and there's going to be five years of no fields, right? There's going to be nothing here. And if that's not done, they're going to have nothing. So I think that's really, really important to alleviate um, you know, that pressure. The other part of it is you talked about no parking. There's going to be during construction, there is going to be no student parking. So they have to be able to walk. They're not going to have cars, which is what they're doing now, to, to these various fields. They need to really be able to, to walk to a field. And so Again, without the current field, we're going to have one field over there, and I think just doing that field, again, is, is inadequate. And I know you mentioned the whole issue of Beaver Brook, excuse me, um, Foley, the fields behind Foley. I think that has to happen, because even today as we sit here, and for the parents who have children that play sports, and this isn't all about sports, but it's a big part of this the building on here that's going to be, be lacking, that, the current situation is really inadequate of what the kids deal with now. It's, apart from North, it's really, really substandard and, and below the standards set forth by a lot of the other neighboring communities. So I think if the, with the Beaverbrook option on the table now and the Foley behind there, if that can be done, I think a situation that is less than ideal becomes a little bit more palatable for people that maybe people can get, get excited upon. But I think that's gonna really need a commitment from some of the elected officials that, that, that are here tonight and those that aren't here to really make that a reality. It shouldn't just be a concept or a thought or just a promise. It really should be a firmer commitment. So thank you. Thank you for your input. Are there any other comments or questions from the public? Yes. Where will construction workers park during construction if it was here? That's a great question. Where will construction workers park? Uh, that will be the responsibility of the contractor that is selected to find a place for them to park. We'll work with them to determine it's appropriate and uh, that, again, that we have experience with that. Are there any other questions? Yes. Would you mind going to the microphone? It's just a quick question. Oh. Okay. Uh, were you here for the whole presentation? No, I, I okay, okay. We, so I just wanted to be sure because we do have, um, yes. This is the massing model. So this is uh, Highland Street. Park Ave is to the left. Uh, we also have, so it, it's intentional to, we, we mentioned step it up the hill and to have a breaking down of the scale so it's not too massive of a building. And then we do have a section that shows how it would fit in terms, there we go, thank you, of uh, Newton Hill Summit at the top. 
and how, how the scale of the building would fit within the site itself. Where is the level of Park Ave? Yeah. Park Ave is the dash line at the bottom. It, it is, it, it's a faint dash line, so it's even lower. So um, that's something that if this is voted as the preferred solution, we will be continuing to take a look at it. So it's really got a lot of opportunity for people to be able to see it from various directions. So we'll continue studying that. Or not see it. Why? If they don't yeah. want to see it. That's what I'm getting at. Mr. Murray, you have a question? Katie, I know, the, uh, I know you've been working hard to lend definition to all the different options, but um, the cost associated with the potential fields on the back side of Foley being done, I know, remains kind of an un, a kind of fluid number. But will there be a number? Do we think there'll be a number before this committee makes a makes a recommendation as to where the where the site would, would be? It seems like we have a lot of definition about a number of things. Jim, back. We um, we were asked um, by the steering committee to take a look at that and so we'll be pre able to present that on the 18th that number we'll be able to we'll have by them we just did not have enough time to feel confident with the level of the estimate that we had is that something we can find out before that, that evening that so would we will uh, very good question we plan to uh, upload our our uh, progress in terms of the preferred schematic report by by Friday, <laughs> so so uh, we will will have more updates embedded in that, and we can have that information for then. Hey, Rob, okay, yes. Anybody mind going to the microphone? <laughs> Thank you. Um, what are the chances that you use Chandler Magnet? for the fields. And if you use Chandler Magnet for the sports fields, how is it going to work when you have kids that are typically 11 and under getting out of school at 220, high school getting out at say 10 of 2, everybody merging together at the same time for practice, offloading, up, you know, onloading. How does that work? Because it seems to me looking at the pictures, that's the best option for fields. You know, so <laughs> That's a great question, and it is the type of thing that we will be taking a much closer look at throughout schematic design, depending on what the steering committee and the building committee ask us to do, to what extent. Any other uh, public questions? Yes. Schematic design, we'll be, t we'll be talking about. I don't have a specific answer for that right now. That's the type of things we've been discussing with the administration as we look at all of these options. We don't, we don't have a finite decision if those fields are going to be developed. And if they are, we will absolutely be looking at schedules and traffic and, and what that impact would be. Perfect, perfect example of what we would have to take a look at were that to be selected. Absolutely, good point. Yes. Um, I just had a question. Like, is the building going to be LEED certified? Ah, thank you. That's a great question. Yes, it will. <laughs> it, we were, we're going to at least shoot for silver, and that gives us some additional reimbursement points for the project as well. Um, we've already started that process in terms of what the opportunities are. We will be diving deeply into that regardless of what site is selected in schematic design. Mm -hmm. And at what level will it be we uh, we'll, We will do a minimum of silver and we'll look at what other opportunities we may have. Any other questions? Yeah, the, Rob, thank you, Rob. Um, additionally, the plan is to include additional insulation for the envelope and the roof and the windows which is a strategy that we used for Nelson Place and South High Community School to reduce energy use right from the beginning. And it uh, allowed us at Nelson Place 
to uh, target net zero. Any other questions or comments? Yes. We have one more question. Sorry, coming back for more, but um, could you explain to people what's going to happen on the 18th? Um, I, I find it really hard to keep up with what's going on and to know ahead of time what is happening with these various meetings. Is there any opportunity for input? Is it just a vote? What's going to happen? And then what happens after the 18th? Thank you. Uh, so on the 18th, as, as Mr. Adams said, it will be a vote of the building committee for which option to pursue as a preferred solution. And from there, we will go ahead with the next phase of our study, which is schematic design. We do have a uh, opportunity on our website. If anybody has comment and they want to um, bring it forward, that is a vehicle for doing so. It's this uh, website address that we have here, lpaa.com backslash get in touch. So if anybody wants to forward some comments, we'd be welcome to take them. It seems like there's another question. I just had one quick question back to the, um, if you show the height of the school versus Newton Hill. Is that showing right that at the bottom of the school is going to be right directly with Park Ave? Uh, that's kind it's of it going to like. be close to the elevation at Highland Street. It's going to be closer to that. Park Ave is the dash line below, mm -hmm. quite a bit lower. So this is a section that's cut. It's as though you're standing um, facing, facing Park Ave, and it's cut through Newton Hill to Highland Street. So you're taking out all of that open space that's right there with all that trees pretty much down to the Park that's Ave? That's what we're, we're, to Park Ave we are not. We are staying within, within the um, boundary of the schools. If we can show the floor plan, the site plan, I think that might be helpful. The boundary of the school goes pretty close to Park Ave, so I don't know how are you Oh, it does, and no, the, the actual site plan, uh, not this. And there's also... So there's, there's Park Ave, okay? Way over yeah. to the left. And there's a monument at the corner of Highland and Park. None of that is touched. Yeah, and that's a pretty steep incline there. So I don't know how there's, it doesn't look like there's too much uh, wiggle. Oh, no, that's a good question. So that section was cut to kind of give a feeling for the height. If you cut a section along the road adjacent to the school, it actually climbs up with the grades behind there. It's a pretty complicated design. Yeah. So um, that, that, that's a good question. Is that taking into account the trails that's there along yes. the North yes. Street? Yes, that, that's track? a part so. of it. It works very well for us in terms of providing the appropriate slope for emergency access and service. There will be an impact. I mean, it, it, it's coming right up closer to the, the boundary, but it is not creating a major cut there. So that was a good, good question. And thank you for helping me to clarify that. All right. Anything else? So one quick thing. I know that we're talking 300 million, maybe. If you could just find a couple million to finish up Elm Park, the original Elm Park, that, you know, all those barriers and, like, part of it's done and the new bridge is put in, but the rest of it didn't kind of get finished. So it will be, a, like, a 1% based on that number. Thank you for your million. input you. on that thought. Any other... Questions or comments? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for your time tonight and your thoughtfulness and your input. We always appreciate it.